a man came to the Prophet والسلام, in Medina. His name was Tamim Dari. He was Christian, he converted to Islam, became a Muslim. And he communicated to the Prophet والسلام, some information about an event which took place. When we study the event critically, we come to the conclusion this could not have been an actual event, it had to be a vision. He said, he spoke about his, his experience to the Prophet ﷺ. Hadith is in Sahih Muslim and the Prophet said to the people, sit down, sit down in the masjid. I have something to say to you. Tamim Udari came to me and told me something about Dajjal which confirms what I've been saying to you. And now we have the event from the lips of the Prophet ﷺ. Tamim Udari and some 30 or 40 of his companions went on board a ship. And then the storms came and blew the ship for a whole month before they arrived at an island. And when they got on shore, they got off the ship and they went on shore, they were confronted by a very hairy creature. Plenty hair. So much hair, you could hardly tell which side is head and which side is tail. And then this creature spoke. And said, I am Jassasa. Jassasa. Spy. Surat al Hujurat, Wala Tajassasu. Do not spy. So, this is an island with a lot of people who excel in spying. And then Jassasa pointed to a monastery. There's someone waiting to see you there. So they rushed to the monastery. <coughs> and there they found this young man powerfully built with curly hair. But there's no description about his eyes. His hands were chained to his neck. His feet were chained. And this man began to question Tamim Udari and his companions. A number of very interesting questions. And then he said, I, I am Dajjal. I am the Antichrist. And when I am released, so up to this moment, he's not as yet released. And when I am released, thank you. <coughs> I will enter every town and every city, including Tunapuna. But I will not be allowed to enter into Mecca and Medina because the angels will bar me. And so now we know, up to this moment in time, the Antichrist is not as yet released. But he is on an island, which is about one month's journey away from the Arab world, by sea. An island which has excellence in spying. And so now we know that when the message came from the messenger of Allah that Dajjal has been released. We know that it is in this island that he is going to be released. And it is from this island that he will launch his mission to impersonate the Messiah. And to eventually rule the world from Jerusalem. Question. 
Which island is it? Before we attempt to answer the question, let us turn to another hadith, another statement of the Prophet ﷺ, which is of crucial importance. It is also in Sahih Muslim. <coughs> he said that when the Antichrist is released, he will live on earth for 40 days. 40 days. Yawmun kasana. One day, like a year. Yawmun kashah. One day, like a month. Yawmun kajum'a. One day, like a week. Wasairu ayyamihi ka ayyamikum. And all his days, implying all the rest of his days, would be like your days. When his day, now listen carefully, <coughs> when his day is like our day, he would be in our dimension of time. And when he is in our dimension of time, then we can see him. At that time, of course, he would be, said the Prophet ﷺ, a Jew, a young man, powerfully built, with curly hair. Where would he be at that time? Of course, he would be in Jerusalem. Ruling the world from Jerusalem, the way the rule, the way the world is now ruled from Washington. But where would he be when he's released on earth? In a day which would be like a year. And where would he be on earth in a day which is like a month? And where would he be on earth in a day which is like a week? Do we have answers for that? Praise be to Allah who allowed this servant Imran to study international relations, international politics, international economics. <coughs> the answer, of course, is that when he is released on earth, he would be on that island. And from that island, he will launch his mission to liberate the Holy Land, to bring the Jews back to the Holy Land, to reclaim it as their own to restore a state of Israel in the Holy Land and get the Jews to believe that this is the Holy Israel of David and of Solomon salam, and to cause that state of Israel to become the ruling state in the world. Which island is it? And in the Bible the mark of the Dajjal is six hundred and 66, meaning 600, and then 60, and then 6, and our prophet says, a day like a year, that's the 600, a day like a month, that's the 60, a day like a week, that's the 6. It's the same thing, using different languages. Now then, which island is it? 
because when he is released it is from that island that he will commence his mission to eventually rule the world from Jerusalem in November of 1917 the British government did something which was incredibly strange and mysterious. A Briton, which is now the prince of the secular world, the secular world takes religion out of politics. And Britain is the prince of the secular world. Britain issues a declaration known as the Balfour Declaration in November 1917 that it is the intention of His Majesty's government to work for the establishment of a Jewish national home in the Holy Land. Did you hear that? The only thing stranger than that that ever occurred in history was the day that the cow jumped over the moon. Why would a secular state which leads the world of secular states declare its intention to work for the establishment of a Jewish national home meaning a Jewish state in the Holy Land <coughs> two months later this was October 1917 in December 1917 it is a British army led by General Allenby which defeats the Ottoman Islamic army and liberates the Holy Land and when Allenby entered into Jerusalem the British general declared Today, the Crusades are over. Oh? Oh, but the Crusades were supposed to have been Christian wars. And you are now a secular state. You're not a Christian state, you're a secular state. How come a secular Britain is continuing a crusade started by the Pope a thousand years before. That's strange. That is incredibly strange. Between 1918 and 1948, it is the island of Britain which ruled over the Holy Land on a mandate conferred by the League of Nations. And during that period of time, with tremendous deception, while pretending to keep the Jews out, Britain opened the doors for the Jews of Europe to enter into the Holy Land and to reclaim it as their own. In between came the interlude of Adolf Hitler, <coughs> which speeded up the movement of the Jews from Europe to the Holy Land. In 1948, Britain did something strangest of all. Britain is a state with a tremendous commitment to the rule of law. And so every time Britain decolonized, 
there was always an insistence of a legal transfer of power. And then you had the flags going up at midnight. Huh? And the national anthem and this constitution and so on. A legal transfer of power. It happened in Trinidad as well. But in 1948, when Britain left the Holy Land, she left like a thief in the dark. For the first time, for the only time in British history, there was no legal transfer of power from Britain to the successor state. In 1948, Britain acted as a midwife for the baby to be born. The European Jewish state of Israel. And so my answer is that that island of Tamimudari is Britain. A very interesting event now takes place in Medina. Either shortly before or shortly after the incident of the dream. And Wailul Lil Arab. Huh? Indicating that Gog and Magog are now released. What is it? The Prophet ﷺ is now speaking a lot about Dajjal. He never spoke on this subject in Mecca. He never spoke on this subject for 17 months in Medina. But now after the change in Qibla, for the first time he's talking about the subject of Dajjal. All the ahadith on Dajjal are all from Medina. Post change of Qibla. Having spoken a lot about Dajjal, explaining to us a lot of things about Dajjal, he now says that he suspects a Jewish boy to be Dajjal, Ibn Sayyad. So he takes Omar radiallahu ta'ala anhu with him and he goes to question the boy. But Ibn Sayyad is rather impertinent in his replies. And Umar radiallahu ta'ala, who is furious, he says, O oh, Messenger of Allah, give me permission, I cut off his head. <laughs> the Prophet said, No, Umar. If he is Dajjal, you cannot kill him. And if he is not Dajjal, it would be sinful to kill him. Go search the hadith, you'll find it in my book downstairs. If he is Dajjal, you cannot kill him, indicates the possibility exists that he can be Dajjal. Are you with me? Don't go away, huh? <laughs> if the possibility exists that he can be Dajjal, then that is only possible if Dajjal has been released. And so the release of Dajjal also takes place in the lifetime of the Prophet Muhammad Because Dajjal is released, and Gog and Magog are released, Qiyamah has now started in the lifetime of the Prophet Muhammad And this is why he said, Ana wal Qiyamah kahatain. I and Qiyamah. I like these two fingers. Now you understand the hadith. 